alert day. Here we are now on Sunrise Southern New England. You are waking up to a blizzard warning. This is a live look outside where you can see what's happening. Um, really, the visibility is so so across the area. It depends where you look. You're taking a look at downtown Providence in a uh, one shot there and then road conditions in another. We want to thank you for waking up early with us as we prepare you for the day, even though it's a Saturday. Good morning. I'm Allison Bologna. And I'm Mario Faro. Yeah, travel ban went into effect at effect 8 o'clock this morning in Rhode Island until 8 o'clock tonight. We are on the verge of a potential blizzard and potentially some historic snowfall for us here in Southern New England. Before we get to our reporters who are out in the field braving mm -hmm. the elements, let's get to Storm Team 10 meteorologist Christina Ernie, who's got the latest on the storm track. And the worst, I think, is yet to come, huh? Yeah, that's right. From now on is when we're going to see the highest snowfall rate. So the steadiest snowfall, the lowest visibility, and all of us across Southern New England are under that blizzard warning. That's when our visibility falls under a quarter mile for a sustained period of time, over three hours. And that's also when our winds are going to be the highest. And we're seeing some significant significant winds out there already, but let's take a look at our visibility because this is why we urge people to stay off the roads. It's not just that snowfall that is stacking up quickly, but it's also our visibility nearing in on about a quarter mile through Taunton, New Bedford, Newport this morning, even up to the Boston area down to about a quarter mile of visibility and right now near zero visibility on the Cape Lake into Hyannis. That's where we can see the worst blizzard conditions through this system. But like I mentioned, the heavy snow is moving in. It has been for a number of hours, but now we're starting to see some deeper bands push in across the region two to three inches of snow per hour. We're seeing a couple of those bands where you see the deepest blues here on my map. So Northwest Providence County also right now moving into New Bedford brutal. We're talking winds that are already clocking in well over 50 miles per hour in addition to about three inches of snow per hour. This is very difficult for plows to even get ahead of. That's why we have travel bans in effect and that's why it's so important to stay off the roads. A big time temperature difference across the region though teens up in Burrowville Smithfield and around 20 degrees in Coventry. We're talking about very fluffy light snow where temperatures are in the teens and the 20s, but we have some temperatures closer to the freezing mark out towards the Cape Plymouth along Plymouth County and the coastline, the east facing beaches there, Falmouth to Hyannis. We're right at freezing, so we have some heavier and wetter snowfall out that direction towards the Cape. That's where we could run into the issue of some power outage concerns. In the meantime, 18 to 24 inches of snow or more is expected. We've already tacked on about a half a foot of that. Coming up, we'll take a closer look look at our latest snowfall totals. Mario. All right. Thank you, Christina. Of course, we have you covered all over the place on this storm this weekend, even though it's a Saturday. We're here for you. I know. Is it a Saturday? Yes. It is. <laughs> yes, we'll be with you all morning long. It's just 831 in the morning and we're kind of in the thick of it, but it's only going to get worse as we get deeper into the day. So we've got reporters out in the region for you. Gabrielle is out in Massachusetts, Southeastern Mass. But let's begin with Tammy, who is in Cranston. Tammy, good morning. Good morning, Allison. So we actually just drove here to the readiness center in Cranston uh, over from Providence and the roads were surprisingly not that bad at all. I mean, granted the DPW workers and the plows, they've been working since the overnight hours to make sure that the roads stay treated. And uh, we definitely noticed that, especially on the highway. While the conditions were slippery and there's definitely some slush on the roads, they weren't that bad overall. The wind is still extremely intense right now. Um, if we can actually pan up to that flag, you can see it fiercely whipping in the wind. So that gives you, I mean, listen, you can hear that too. That gives you an idea of just how windy it is outside. That travel ban is in effect in Rhode Island right now for all vehicles except for emergency vehicles. And Governor McKee spoke about this yesterday. Take a listen. It could be the single most uh, uh, inches in, uh, in the state's history if in fact it comes through as, as it's um, projected. Not only are we expecting large amounts of snow, we're also expecting high winds. And we're fully expecting whiteout conditions tomorrow. This is serious. We don't put these travel bans in effect lightly, we, but it is dangerous. It would be extremely dangerous for anyone to get on the highway and travel. It is dangerous for sure, and they'll actually be holding a news conference here in about an hour or so. So when that happens, we'll bring that to you live. But for now, we're reporting live in Cranston. Back to you. Tammy, thank you. All right, now heading east from where Tammy is into Bristol County, Mass., where the consistency of the snow is heavier and wetter and it's windier too. Gabrielle Caracciola live in New Bedford, where the mayor there has declared a state of emergency. Gabrielle? 
Yeah, the mayor here has declared that state of emergency. We fortunately haven't seen many people out on the roads this morning, really just those plows and emergency personnel. People are sticking to that state of emergency and staying home. And you can see the snow here is really coming down quite heavy with those wind gusts at times, making it very, very cold out here. And it is also reducing the visibility. If you look down the street, we can really only see about a block down. There is a light down at the end of the street that I can't see from where I'm standing, but it would only take about 10 seconds to drive to that traffic light. So that's just to give you a little bit idea of the poor visibility that we are seeing out here in New Bedford and the snow here a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, going to make that shoveling a lot harder. I'm live in New Bedford. Gabrielle Caracciolo, back to you. All right, we want to take a look at power outages right now, too. We've been on the air for quite a bit of time this morning on and off. And in the beginning of the morning, not a lot of power outages, specifically with National Grid. But we're expecting that to change as we get deeper into the day. Here's yeah. a live look at the outage map with yeah. National Grid. So yeah. you can see it's spotty. Only five active outages right now, which is good. You know, the, the snow is light, so we don't have to worry about that. That heavy wet snow weighing right. down power lines, taking down tree limbs. So that's good news. However, Massachusetts Different story, yes. Yeah, thirty-nine thousand plus. This is statewide across the Commonwealth power outages um, because they are especially. You can see them all centered mm -hmm. there. The eastern part of the state, out on the Cape, that's where they're seeing the heaviest winds, the strongest winds, and the, that heavier wetter snow consistently and this is exactly what we were expecting uh, through the week so if you need to report a power outage today we want to help you do that here are the numbers on your screen national grid customers in rhode island or massachusetts can call that number 800-465-1212 eversource customers in massachusetts 800-592-2000 and then in pasco the utility district if you have any problems there you can report it to them at 401-5686 Two, two, two. And as you saw just there from that power outage map, the storm yeah. expected to hit the Cape pretty hard, the hardest, as they're expected to see some of the highest snow totals from the storm. That and strong gusts of wind, which can lead to widespread power outages. That's a concern from some residents, especially in Sandwich, who, by the way, rely on their electricity to power their well water. We lose water. So we end up, what we do is we'll, I'll fill a garbage pail full of uh, water and use it for the toilet. And that's, we're pretty much self-sufficient. Utility companies say if you do lose power, it could take longer to restore because crews have to wait until conditions are safe to get up in those bucket trucks. They have to wait for those wind speeds to die down, so be patient. And we'll be with you, bringing you coverage of the storm all weekend this morning. Right after this newscast at 9.30, you can watch us on MeTV. The channels are listed on your screen. We'll also be live streaming on TurnTo10.com, Facebook, and our NBC10 app. In other news that was breaking overnight, Providence police are investigating a shooting involving one of their officers. This happened at East and Transit Streets in the Fox Point neighborhood around 10 o'clock last night. Police initially responded to a breaking and entering, and we have confirmed that an officer did discharge his weapon. We were told by police, Major David LePayton, that no one was hit, no one was hurt. The suspect is expected to face criminal charges. And we're speaking with the mayor in a few minutes live here on television, and we'll follow up with that and the snow. And also this, firefighters knocking down a house fire in Attleboro. You can see here how intense the flames really were. And this video came in to us from a viewer. Happened on James Street around 6 o'clock last night. We don't know if there were any injuries here, and we still don't know yet this morning what caused that fire. All right, 837 coming up on this weather alert day. You know this by now, a massive snowstorm impacting all of us here in southern New England, but we have the up-to-the-minute information you'll need from our team. As we take a live look at the conditions outside, this is downtown Providence, a blanket of white. It is windy and it is messy out there in terms of visibility. So, Christina's got her weather alert forecast on the other side of the break. Headlines, weather, and traffic all the time with the now bar that is up on your screen as we thank you, as always, for turning to 10 in the a.m. It's 840 on your Saturday morning, just 21 degrees outside of our studios here in Cranston. And Anthony is outside of our studios here in Cranston. Yes, a meteorologist who doesn't just give us the forecast, he experiences it firsthand. You like Anthony, it. Yeah. tell us what you got. <laughs>
and Mario Allison certainly being outside in it. You get an appreciation for just all the reporters that we have across the region, all the crews that are out right now treating the roads because it is kind of unpleasant when you factor in how strong the wind is and how cold it really feels. Now we got a lot of chime in pictures that we've been getting as well. So thank you to everyone who's been sharing those. Wanted to share this as well from the Newport area saying it looked like around five to six inches of snow out on the table. Now I was going to take a measurement and I will eventually do so. But what I can tell you is the wind makes it extremely difficult. We've got some areas where it's like little to no snow, other drifts that are a couple feet just beside me. So you have to take several measurements and average them together. So here are the sustained winds at roughly 15 to 30 miles per hour. And then the gusts, which are of course frequently stronger than that from time to time. I'm feeling them right now here. We got those gusts up over 30, over 40 miles per hour. We've seen some even locally approaching 50 at times, much stronger out on Cape Cod. But if we get three consecutive hours with those strong wind gusts over 35 and visibility less than a quarter mile, those are the blizzard conditions. And I anticipate many areas will be uh, having the potential to get that for today. And one also thing that we're going to talk about here, the wind chill. It feels extremely cold when you factor in those gusts. It feels like around zero degrees in Smithfield right now, about four in Providence. And at best, those wind chills are only in the teens right now. So if you are going to venture outside, you wanted to play in the snow a little bit, you know, the consistency is kind of light and fluffy, especially right here, given those colder temperatures and that wind. But you definitely need to be bundling up out there. I'll have more on this coming up in just a little bit, along with Christina's forecast. We'll have that for you shortly. Back to you. Anthony, thank you. All right, joining us now, Providence Mayor Jorge Lorza, joining us live to talk about the situation in the capital city during this potential blizzard on this Saturday. <laughs> Mayor, thanks for taking the time to join us. I know you're very busy today. Set the scene of what things look like in Providence right now. Well, as of right now, um, it's not so bad. You know, we've been uh, we've been tracking it all night. We've been um, uh, plowing with the with the plows down since about three or four o'clock in the morning. You know, looking outside my door, it's still coming down really, really light. But, um, you know, we, the, the roads are passable. That's all going to change in the next hour or so, I'm told, is it's going to start coming down a lot harder. So, you know, please, everyone, the most important thing, if you don't have to leave your house due to an emergency, please just stay home, uh, hunker down as best you can, and let us take care of cleaning off the streets. When it comes so, to that, um, Mayor, uh, can you tell us about how you've staffed up with the uh, city resources? Do you have enough people for this storm? Yeah, we do. We do. Thankfully, we haven't had issues um, in terms of personnel. We have about 109 pieces of equipment out there. We have heavy trucks and uh, they're all and they're all staffed. So uh, we got a full complement of folks out there. We'll be working day and night until this is cleaned up. Now, Mayor, I know um, in terms of plowing, sometimes historically over the years covering these storms, the side narrow streets get they get plowed last and people get upset. What's your message to your residents of your city in terms of if they don't see a plow as quickly as they want to? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, thank you for that, Mario. So uh, first off, you know, we're going hit, to get hit heavy and we can't guarantee that every street will be passable throughout every point in the storm. And so uh, please just be patient. Know that we have a full team out there that's that's cleaning. And unless you absolutely have to leave the house for an emergency, just stay home. Um, this is likely, the cleanup is likely going to spill over into Sunday. If anyone has any concerns, please just dial 311. That connects directly with my office. And, uh, you know, if the plow drivers didn't miss a street, we'll get out there right away. We have a whole communication system and team that can respond to any calls that we receive. So call 311 and let us know. We'll get out there. All right, that's really important. 311. We also want to ask you about a shooting that occurred overnight over in the Fox Point neighborhood. We understand it was a police involved shooting. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Any updates on that? Yeah, so I spoke with the chief uh, last night about it. And uh, yeah, we had a situation uh, where actually, because of the conditions, because of the snow, we had a police officer that fell and uh, someone in his car uh, was driving towards him. Thankfully, thankfully. Uh, no one was injured and the apprehension was made and uh, um, you know, it all ended about as good as we could hope for. So that's uh, that's the extent that we're aware of right now. Of course, there's going to be a full review of a situation mm -hmm. like this, uh, but thankfully no one was injured and uh, the person uh, was apprehended. All right. Okay. Providence Mayor Jorge Lorza, thank you for your time, and I hope Omar can get out and enjoy the snow tomorrow. <laughs> the storm is gone. I'm sure he's looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Stay uh, safe. Thank yeah. you.
Coming up, our Team 10 coverage, of course, continues on this weather alert day. We'll go live back to Cranston and New Bedford to show you what's happening in those communities. We'll be right back. morning on this weather alert day. We're at 21 degrees outside, so we've dropped a few since we've started. You can see on the left, this is our camera at George's of Galilee down there, looking out at Salty Brine Beach. In the distance, you can't even see. Beyond that would be Block Island. On the right, road conditions right now, you can see still a lot of snow cover on the roads. Reminder, this is a great day to download the Storm Team 10 weather app. Just use the camera on your phone to scan the QR code that is on your screen. Yeah, it's really helpful. Now we actually want to go out to Block Island, even though you can't see it from that shot, um, to New Shore and Police Chief Matthew Moynihan. Now, you don't have a ton of people like you normally do in the summertime out there on Block Island, but still quite a few people out there weathering the storm. Can you set the scene for us? What's the latest? Good morning. Yes, good morning, Allison. Uh, yeah, we do. We have uh, still quite a few uh, uh, residents that, that live year round are on the island. Uh, folks here, you know, deal with challenging weather, weather all the time. Uh, and so uh, I think uh, they're hunkered down now. Our message, you know, stays the same, and we're just encouraging people to stay home. Um, there's high winds. You know, we've had the highest winds probably about a, an hour and a half ago at 65 miles an hour, and they're pretty mm -hmm. constant, uh, blowing at about 30 to 40 miles an hour, ranging from there. Mm -hmm. So we're having. Some challenges with uh, some snow drifts. Uh, our road crews are out uh, trying to keep the roadways out, but uh, really we're stressing, you know, uh, as the governor's travel ban to really encourage people to stay home and, and uh, call 911 or reach out to us if, if they're in need of any service. Yeah, Chief, how are you holding up in terms of power outages? Are you seeing that at this point? Yeah, the, uh, the power company's done a great job. We had a few minor issues this morning uh, that have since been corrected. And there are no residents uh, right now on the island uh, that are, are experiencing any outages. Uh, so, again, you know, this, this goes into really encouraging our, our uh, residents to stay home so that, you know, our highway department and our power company can, can uh, respond to, to the emergencies and, and situations that arise and, and get them rectified as quickly as possible. Obviously, no ferry service today, right? Of course. But uh, if somebody has an emergency, who should they call outside of 911 if they need some emergency assistance right away? No, we encourage, you know, they, the first is call 911. They call us here at the police department. It's 401 466 3220. We have, you know, starting on Thursday, uh, we've been reaching out to our uh, elderly population on the island or maybe uh, those residents that may need a little extra uh, assistance and, and so we'll continue to do that throughout the storm today just checking in but really our message is to uh, you know stay inside and be safe uh, good good time to really catch up on and maybe a, a series on the TV and, and just uh, enjoy the day and wait for the storm to pass that's right and check right. on your neighbors that's yes, really a headline exactly. today too Chief Michael Moynihan out on New Shore and Block Island. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. Just want to pass Thank along you. too now because of the winds now, the Jamestown, Mount Hope, Newport, Sakonet River Bridge all closed as of right now, according to the Turnpike and Bridge Authority. Which is typical yes. in this kind of weather. All right, let's head out to Bristol County, Mass, to Bedford, where NBC10's Gabrielle Caracciola is live there with the conditions. Gabrielle? Hey guys, yeah, in the last 15 minutes or so, we have seen the visibility here in New Bedford reduce even further. We before were only able to see kind of down to the ends of the block. Now we can't even see quite that far. And when these winds do pick up every couple of minutes or so, they are blowing the snow around in circles and making it even harder to see the conditions here. But the snow that has been coming down now is a lot lighter. It's a lot fluffier than what we were seeing earlier, which was a much heavier snow. And we are not seeing many people out on the roads here today day as there is a state of emergency declared here in New Bedford. Reporting live, Gabrielle Caracciolo, back to you. All right, we want to get right over to Christina Ernie. You know, we've been talking about a blizzard warning all morning, Christina. What does it take to get to an actual blizzard? Well, we need three or more consecutive hours, under a quarter mile visibility, plus those winds over 35 miles per hour sustained. We're certainly verifying that low visibility here for our People's Credit Union Skycam Network at Prime Care of Fall River. You can barely even see those roadways that are snow covered and the high winds are no issue for us this
this morning either. We are seriously achieving those high winds of 50 plus mile per hour gusts from the north as we go on through the course of the first half of your day and then we'll start to see some better improvements with those winds later on. But check this out. We've topped an 84 mile per hour wind gust in Truro. Nantucket coming in at a 69 mile per hour wind gust. Locally, we're seeing between 40 and 55 mile per hour winds and through the rest of your day, we will continue to see those 60 to 70 mile per hour winds for Plymouth County, the Cape, even through southern Bristol County and along our immediate coastline. Even 40 to 50 mile an hour winds, that's high, that's dropping our visibility, creating those near whiteout conditions. But the biggest issue with those higher winds are going to be any power outages, especially further off to our east. Now, most of us have seen between four and six inches worth of snow. These totals, though, are stacking up fast because for many of us, we're seeing that light, fluffy snow. So over six inches for us in West Warwick, Little Compton coming in at six inches, five to five and a half for Charlestown, North Kingstown and Coventry coming in at four. But like I mentioned, these totals are going to be skyrocketing when we see some heavier bands of snow working in. You can see we are locked into that snow on our satellite and radar. But when we take a closer look at our radar imagery here with the deep blue colors on our maps, that indicates more than two inch per hour snowfall rates, and we're seeing that through northern Providence County, and this has been going on for at least an hour and a half. So I do suspect those totals are starting to shoot up and the same through New Bedford. We just heard from our live reporter who said that visibility is getting close to zero, and we're seeing that with two to three inches of snow per hour ranging from Plymouth County through Bristol County. So we are headed towards 18 to 24 inches worth of snow that higher end for those of us who do get into those heavier bands of snow, but most of us are coming out of this thing with more than a foot. We get through that timing and the intensity of the snow really picks up as we go on through the course of the afternoon and our temperatures even fall a bit teens and low 20s for us as we approach the afternoon. That's going to create the perfect consistency for light and fluffy snowfall. Again, outer Cape and islands slightly heavier, wetter snow condensing the snowfall totals a little bit. But as we get closer to the end of the evening after sundown and between about 7 and 9 PM, we start to see some dry air infiltrate the system as the area of low pressure trends its way northward into the Gulf of Maine. So we'll start to see the snow come to an end later this evening. And what you need to know is that into early tomorrow morning, our temperatures are plummeting. Still plenty of snow out there. It's going to be messy for the next couple days, really. But we're down into the single digits with dangerous sub zero wind chills heading into tomorrow morning. So make sure that you're doing any cleaning, any snow plowing, any shoveling today. Make sure that you're bundling up and taking those warming breaks, but it's going to be turning dangerously cold overnight tonight. So you're definitely not going to want to be out there doing any cleaning later this evening. Still windy tomorrow, but brightening up temperatures in the 20s. If you're looking forward to more mild temperatures, 40s and 50s middle next week. Back to you. All right, Christina, thank you. And with all of that comes black ice too. Just when you think it's over. Nope, we got a long way to go today. Yeah, exactly. Our coverage continues right after this. You can always get updates on turn to 10.com, Facebook and Twitter. We'll be right back. On the region, look at this. The camera's just bouncing up and down. Talk about on the waterfront. You can't even really see the capital city in the distance like we normally can on that nice view. Ooh, boy, the visibility is lousy, huh? All right, that's in Rhode Island. Now we're going to Fall River, yeah. where I think it's actually worse there. What do you think? Yeah, definitely worse. You can't even see the highway. Normally you can see Government Center, and then beyond that, the Braga Bridge uh, looking westbound. So. All right, let's go to Greenville next. Uh, our camera's at Waterman Lake. Uh, a little bit better there, I suppose. It all depends on where the camera's pointing, though, this yeah, morning. Exactly. But uh, windy all across the region. And I think we've got one more camera to show you. Yeah, our tower cam as we look out over the beautiful city of Providence. A little rough out there, though, today. Oh, boy. <laughs> we'll be right back. Day. 
Here we are waking up to this this morning, 902 in the morning, a blizzard warning. This is a live look outside at some of the road conditions you can see are very poor right now. Can't even see the pavement in that shot. And then over on the other side, you can see Iggy's, which looks a little bit better, but not by much. These are kind of consistent conditions all across Rhode Island, and it's even worse right now in southeastern Massachusetts. 902 in the morning. Thanks for waking up early with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Allison Bologna. And I'm Mario Flari. Yeah, we've got you covered during this potential blizzard and potential historic snowfall on this Saturday, January 29th. Our team is in place to get you through today's storm. We're going to check with our reporters who are out in Cranston and New Bedford this morning. But first, let's check in with Christina, who's got more on the track of the storm and the worst may be yet to come, huh, Christina? Yeah, we're on track for that area of low pressure to get close to us as we reach this early afternoon. So until then, the heaviest bands of snow are just beginning to push on shore, dumping two to three inches of snow per hour in spots. That's dropping our visibility to near zero to go along with these incredibly brutal winds. That's why all of southern New England is under that blizzard warning from now through about midnight tonight and you're right this is pretty much a historic storm or at least it could be since we're already seeing visibility levels near zero in spots and our snow totals could rival some of our other historic snowstorms of the past we're seeing about a half a mile visibility in Providence but close to a quarter mile of visibility from Smithfield to Taunton even up to the Boston area New Bedford out to Hyannis we were just at zero visibility we're now up to about a quarter mile that's not that great of an improvement though and we're pretty much zero in Newport to Block Island right now it's all that blowing in drifting snow. That's the biggest issue since we're already clocking in with 40 to 60 mile per hour winds. Our satellite and radar shows us all of us are snow, even at the Cape where the snow is a little bit heavier, some lighter and fluffier stuff off to our northwest. But you can see some deep blues on our radar here. That indicates that heaviest snowfall. That's where we're getting into the near zero whiteout conditions. It's where snowfall can be coming down at that two to three inches per hour. Treacherous out there and dangerous travel. Now our temperatures really give us a good idea of the consistency of the snow. Pretty easy to shovel and snow blow when temperatures are in the teens and the low 20s. Light fluffy snow, but closer to the Cape and even into Plymouth County, a portion of Bristol County too. It's a little bit heavier. It's sticking together a little bit more and compacting as well. Wind chills are dangerous, so if you are heading out later to do some shoveling or snow blowing, you'll be feeling like near zero. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at how much snow we're expecting and how high the winds will get. Mario. All right, thank you, Christina. Travel ban went into effect in Rhode Island about an hour ago until 8 o'clock tonight except for essential personnel and all bridges in Rhode Island closed. Newport, Jamestown, Sakonet River and Mount Hope bridges closed to traffic except for emergency vehicles. And that's because of the wind primarily and also because of visibility being yeah. so poor. All right, we have reporters out in the field. Let's head out to Tammy first, who I believe is still in Cranston. Tammy, good morning. How are you holding up? Good morning, Allison and Mario. Um, I'm trying not to freeze to death. It is frigid outside. Just the temperatures and the wind, the combination, it's horrible. I can barely feel my hands, but I will toughen it out. I'm a New Englander. We can get beyond that. More importantly, I wanted to show you guys what to expect this morning if you do have to wake up and clear off your car because you should probably get that done today and not wait until tomorrow because trust me when I say all of this will freeze. So we turned on the heat inside of our live truck, so that's why the windshield doesn't look bad right now, but you can hear the ice on the hood of this. So that shows you what your windshield will look like as soon as you get outside and start that process. And there's also quite a bit of snow on this, so this could probably take you a while to clear off because keep in mind, you do have to clear it off the roof of your vehicle as well. I'm not gonna do that with this live truck. I'll leave that up to Spencer, my photographer, because he is far taller than I am but you'll definitely want to set some time aside today to do that. Now, New Englanders, of course, we're used to the snow, right? We're used to blizzard-like conditions. Well, I spoke to one woman in Providence this morning who, trust me, is not looking forward to today's storm. I think that this is like the first real snowstorm of the year, honestly. Like, I live in New England, like I've grown up here, and we haven't had anything crazy so far, so this is like the first real snowstorm. Are you looking forward to it? No. No, How do you I'm not. feel about snow overall? I hate it, honestly. I don't know why I have been born here and raised here because I hate the snow. So I'm not excited for it. I love the honesty because I say the same thing all the time. I don't like the snow, but I was born here. So, you know, we got to deal with it, right? Well, uh, Governor McKee's actually going to hold a press conference here in Cranston. Uh, we're at the Readiness Center in another half hour or so. So when that happens, we'll make sure to bring that to you live. For now, we're live in Cranston. Back to you guys. 
All right. Look at the difference between where Tammy is yes. and where Gabrielle is right now. Exactly. Uh, Gabrielle, are you okay? <laughs> East of Providence <laughs> Good morning. is really getting hit. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, it's pretty cold out here and the visibility is getting near zero. We are seeing these winds really picking up, blowing the snow all around and you can't see far. But I also wanted to show you guys just how much snow we've accumulated here in New Bedford so far. If you take a look at my feet, I'm standing on an area that hasn't been shoveled. In some spots, we're seeing upwards of eight plus inches, but it is varying because of these winds. Some spots have more snow some spots have less because the wind is picking up and moving that snow and earlier we were saying this was great snowball making snow is very heavy compact now we're getting a lot lighter fluffier snow coming down and again visibility here near zero in bedford i'm reporting live gabrielle caracciolo back to you She's got a great attitude, right? We've been there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. This is our first big storm here anyway, yes. so we'll She's see. Doing how a great job. Goes. All right, joining us now is Mayor Don Grebian and the city's DPW director out of Pawtucket, David Clemente. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Mayor, what are you seeing in the great city of Pawtucket? First, good morning, Mario. Good morning, Allison. Good morning. And just you know, because I have to start it this way. Allison, your street is down to pavement. It's Thank the only you. way to talk if it is. <laughs> I uh, appreciate that. <laughs> no, all, all seriousness, um, from where I sit, you know, we the, the guys and gals and the team for DBW are out there doing their, their hard work, and I'll let uh, Director Clemente talk a little bit about that. But having said that, you know, the message is we're asking people that we, compliance, most vehicles are off the car, off the cars are off the street. We're asking people to stay off the street, stay safe. Um, the teams have been able to keep up right now uh, because of the way the snow is coming down, but it's the next several hours that are going to get very challenging for everybody. It's going to get worse before it gets better for sure. Can you give us yeah. a sense also um, of how you're dealing with staffing? You know, so many cities and towns have been dealing with staffing shortages. Are you guys okay right now in Pawtucket when it comes to that? Yep, from a DPW perspective, um, Dave, go ahead. If you want to just quickly, you know, we've got 70 plus vehicles out there as well as, you know, our staffing. Um, we've had minimal, um, you know, sickness, and with the COVID, we've been very fortunate, and our guys and gals are out there working um, hard to make sure that the streets are clear. All right, Director Clemente, tell us about the challenges that your crews are facing right now, because we're still yet to get into the worst of it. He might be frozen. Oh, he's frozen. All right, I'll go. So the storm I, has I can frozen tell you, his we got computer. <laughs> is um you know we we've gotten the update um they're they're you know what they're worried about now is just fatigue because they've been out there since 12 o'clock they've done the pre-treating um and they're out plowing right now so we're worried about fatigue but right now the streets are you know pretty clear it's getting a little windy and and the worst of it like we said is to come down in the next couple of hours and when it comes down heavy it's going to get harder for everybody to to maintain and keep the uh streets clear like they are now and they're going to have to, you guys are going to have to deal with black ice as we go into the overnight hours. So um, Absolutely. we're dealing yeah. with this today, Mayor Grebian, and then all the way into tomorrow morning. So we're going to check back in with you in a little bit. Thank you for your time, Mayor. Thank you. Be yeah. safe. You too. Uh, all right. Coming up in this weather alert day, yes, the massive snowstorm is the story of the day. We have all the latest. And now it's 19 degrees outside of our studios here in Cranston, which is where we find. Yes, he, the cold does not stop him from giving us a first-hand forecast. Anthony Macari is outside in the snow outside of our studios. Anthony, how are you holding up? Oh, his <laughs> mic's not good. Holding up so well that he can't <laughs> talk. He's speechless. He's speechless. Yes, well, yeah, we'll be happened. back with him in just a little yeah. bit. But you can see from the parking lot there, um, we're having trouble getting things cleared up. The wind's blowing, as you can see, and that's what we're worried about this morning. I'm buying him some time so he can put his microphone back on. <laughs> the wind chills are what we're really worried about right now. But so far, Mario, the good news is we haven't seen a lot of power outages yet. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, Massachusetts, the Bay State, is a different story because of their brunt of the Cape in Eastern Mass getting uh, the brunt of yeah. the storm. But uh, we'll His have... uh, microphone's not coming back, so. No. We're going to go to a break, <laughs> and we'll be back with our crews live out in the field on the other side of the break.
We are simulcasting right now on the radio, News Radio 920 and 104.7 WHJJ. FM. Lots of ways to get us. Yes, we do everything we can to get all the information out to you. All right, we are going to go live to New Bedford again. Gabrielle is really seeing the worst of all of these conditions out there. Uh, but you're holding up pretty good, Gabrielle. <laughs> How's the wind? How are the conditions? Yeah. And uh, what can you report? Not too bad. Yeah, the winds kind of calm down a little bit, but at times we do get those really strong gusts and it can last even 10, 15 minutes where the wind is blowing really hard and the visibility is very low. And then it comes down to this, which isn't really that calm, but comparatively, it's not as bad with that wind and the snow is really coming down. Not even an hour ago, this sidewalk here that I'm standing on, a snowblower came through, cleared the sidewalk, and now you can see there's already another inch or two of snow on the sidewalk. But this snow, it's lighter, it's fluffier, can't really make a snowball with it, uh, not as heavy as what we were seeing before. So that's a good sign, a little bit easier if you're having to shovel these sidewalks. But again, still pretty low visibility here in New Bedford. Back to you. All right, thank you, Gabrielle. Closer to home, we have our own Anthony McCarty to right. give us the latest yeah. on the forecast. Yeah, not so bad out here, honestly. We don't have any real shoveling to do exactly right where I'm standing, and that has to do with the wind. It's extremely windy where I've been standing. See the gusts coming through right there, and the snowflakes have gotten a little bit bigger, and we've seen a lot of chime-in pictures that you guys have been submitting, so certainly appreciate that. A lot of them coming in showing us that we have snowfall that has been up to around four to six inches across the region with those winds gusting 30, 45 miles per hour. The wind chills anywhere from zero to five degrees, and we're gonna continue to see the potential for some more issues as we go throughout time. Now, in terms of what it's going to be feeling like for the rest of the day, how much snow that is going to be falling, I'll throw it back into the studio for meteorologist Christine Ernie. Over to you. Thank you very much, Anthony. 919, and since you've been outside, I got a report of seven inches from Burrowville. That's in one spot where we're seeing two to three inches of snow per hour. Most of us are clocking in, though, between five and six and a half inches of snow. We're starting to see those higher totals, though, develop because of that light, fluffy nature of the snowfall really stacking up quickly, and especially where the bands are heaviest near zero visibility. That's where we're really going to be tacking on some of these biggest totals throughout the storm. We're really right in the thick of it right now, where we're heading into that 18 to 24 inches worth of snow across the region for Rhode Island into the Blackstone River Valley into Bristol County and certainly Plymouth County and the Cape really getting hammered with not only the snowfall but also those high winds. I wanted to show you guys this camera in Narragansett because you just can't see anything. That is our white out conditions here in Narragansett, our People's Credit Union Skycam Network from the Coast Guard House Restaurant. So zero visibility, 22 degrees, but it feels like six because of these winds sustained 22 miles an hour, but gusting up to about 40. These these are the kind of conditions that make this a blizzard white out dangerous to drive. You just can't see even a few feet in front of you. And this is why it's so important to stay off those roads. Lots of blowing and drifting snow across the region as well, making big drifts on roadways. And we're starting to see the intensity of that snowfall really pick up on our satellite and radar. And in particular, if I zoom into two specific bands, the snow is coming down around two or three inches per hour. And that ranges from Providence County down into a portion of Kent County right along the Connecticut Connecticut state line and a super heavy band that's right over New Bedford heading into Fall River. We've actually been seeing this for the past couple hours. That's where we're getting about two inches per hour and that extends through Plymouth County. So the totals here really stacking up. Our temperatures have been falling this morning and we're eventually even heading into the teens and lower 20s. So the consistency of the snow is getting a lot fluffier, meaning those totals will start to climb even faster and even higher over the Cape and the islands though through the next couple hours. We're still getting some slightly heavier snowfall, which could give us some power outage issues there. But as we get closer to noontime, one o'clock or so, we're looking at some pretty light, fluffy snowfall, low moisture content, meaning not great for snowballs. And it's pretty easy to shovel or snowblow, but with temperatures in the teens and those feels like values in the single digits, it's brutal to be outside. So take those warming breaks if you are heading out to do some cleanup. Still teens for us around 3 p.m. and still heavy at that time as well. By 7, 8 and 9 p.m., we'll start to see this snow really 
begin to clear up. We start to see a drying pattern work and as the area of low pressure continues its journey off to our northeast. So we'll start to see some improvements between 7 and 9 p.m. Eventually down into those low single digits early Sunday morning. So this snow is going nowhere. It will be blowing and drifting though across the roads all throughout the day on Sunday since we do stay windy. In the meantime, for the rest of the day today, we are expecting 60 to up to 70 mile per hour winds for Plymouth County, Southern Bristol County, the Cape. Again, this could create some power outage concerns and inland lots of blowing and drifting snow with gusts already topping 40 to 50 miles per hour. So for the rest of the day, temperatures fall a cold snow for us today. Staying off the roads is going to be key and into tomorrow. Staying cold again in the lower 20s, mostly sunny skies and windy tomorrow. All right, 30s for us as we head into early next week and some milder temperatures eventually by midweek. But we'll be back continuing to track this blizzard for you coming up in just a bit. A few minutes at 930, you can watch all of our storm coverage on MeTV. The channels are on your screen, 10.2. Cox, it's 810, Comcast 290, Fios 460, Charter 114, full channel 990. And it's important because the governor is coming up with a press conference at about 930, and we'll be carrying that live for you as well. Yes, and we'll also be streaming live on TurnTo10.com as we always do, and you can watch us on Facebook and our NBC10 app. All right, that does it for us on Weekend Sunrise officially, but then our coverage continues right after this. Everyone stay safe, and thank you for turning to 10 in the a.m.